Well, good evening, everyone. Hello, good evening. Lisa here, nice to see you. Welcome to Astrophysics Live. This is the second edition. And this one's very exciting because we're going to learn how to look at the moon and the stars. Now, we picked the evening time for this astrophysics session because it's a pretty special night tonight. It's the full moon or the almost full moon. It's about 96, 97% full. So as it rises over the horizon, you'll be able to see the beautiful face of the moon and you'll be able to learn how to explore the moon and the stars together. So if you haven't already gone to the App Store and downloaded this wonderful stargazing app by you, light and it's a free stargazing app it can help you to see the stars we can already start to see what it looks like please go and download that now so you're ready um, so go to your app store wherever you get your apps type in stargazing app and pick out skyview light and get that down so we can all play with that together now tonight we're going to do a Q&A and I could already see some fantastic questions coming in. Uh, I'll be answering those a little bit later and you'll do that through slido.com, S-L-I-D-O.com and the code is B222. So you just log in there and you'll be able to ask all your questions and get back to me. So let's get on to slido.com and um, you can start asking those questions and um, I'd love you to start off just by telling me whereabouts you are in Australia. Um, so are you on the East Coast? Are you in New South Wales? Are you in Tasmania? Are you on the West Coast in Perth or Western Australia? Are you in the middle of the Northern Territory? I'd love to know where you are. So tell me where you are on Slido and, and we'll all wave hello. Now it's interesting because Australia is such a big country. Now where I am on the East Coast, it's already like the already set. If you're in the NT or if you're in the middle of Western Australia, it depends where you are. And that's because the Earth is rotating as a big ball. So if the sun's in the sky here, it's shining down on the Earth. It might be shining in Western Australia. But over here in the East Coast, it's already gone dark. So it's pretty exciting to be able to share this journey with people all across the country. And it's going to be really good. Okay. Let's get started with the Skyview app. I hope you have joined me from Sydney, Wales, from Perth. So we've got someone in Perth. Hello, Perth. Um, people in Melbourne, New South Wales, um, Brizzy, Bega. Welcome, Bega. And uh, lots and lots of people from all over the country. This is fantastic, Canberra people. Hi, guys. Darwin, NT. I'm not sure if it's dark there yet, but I reckon it'll be around sunset now. So lots of cool people from across the country. So let's get into this app. It's called Skyview, and I chose it because it's really good and it's you have to pay for it, um, the light version. If you want to upgrade, you can um, pay and get some extra features, but actually it's really, really good. So the basic form of the app is that you can look at your phone, and you can just start to see that there, and you can see some of the stars. And what's in front of your phone now it's got a feature called augmented reality um, and that means it gives you kind of a see-through background um, and I don't like that so much some people do but if you click on the top left corner there are these three stripes and you can turn that feature off if you want um, you press the video camera icon you can turn it on or off so there it is off on and there it is off I like the black background because it's easy to see the stars so this enables you with your smartphone to actually hold it up and look at the stars and it tells you exactly what you're looking at, the stars and the planets with the sky uh, and watch back and see how it works. But basically there is a few things you need to know. Okay, the first thing you need to know is about the horizon. Now, if you think about when you're looking out on the ocean and you can see the earth and then you can see the sea or the ocean and then you can see the sky and that line between the ground or the the sea and the sky that's called the horizon so there's a red line on the app and that shows you where the horizon is you can see this red line right along right around in every single direction so hold the app out now and look right across the directions and you can see this red line which is the horizon now, things above the horizon are things we can see in the sky. So all of that is above our heads. 
and that's all above the horizon. Stuff below the horizon is under the ground and we can't see it at the moment because the Earth is a huge ball, like a netball shape. Um, so there are many stars around in every direction, even below our feet right now. And you can look down and see the stars that are below our feet. Now, there be the stars that you can see in places in the northern hemisphere, places like China or Europe or North America, um, even the North Pole. And they're stars we can't see at the moment because they're below the ground. But we can see stars that are in the southern hemisphere because that's where we're sitting on the Earth. So we can see stars above our heads and you can do some cool, cool things um, to find out what you're looking at. So let's look around the horizon and you can see that there are different compass directions like north, south, east, west, northwest, southeast, etc. So those are denoted by little letters. So I'm looking east, E, and if I go that way, that must be west. There's a little W over there. So I want you to explore around your environment using the app, and you can see which directions you're looking in. That's really good fun. Okay, the reason we want to know about directions is because um, we can find specific things that we might want to look for. So I'm going to look towards the southeast. Now, for me, it's this direction, but for you, it could be any direction depends where. So I'm going to look towards the southeast along the horizon, that red line that goes right around us, and I start to see a constellation, a group of stars, and that is outlined by a blue line on the app. So I can see this beautiful outline. Now I want you in Slido to tell me if you can see a constellation there towards the southeast. So you move around the horizon, around the red line, wait till you find the SE, that means southeast, and then tell me what constellation is above that position. I want you to tell me in Slido, see who can race towards the southeast and find that constellation. I'm gonna have a look on Slido, see if I can get some answers in. Okay, so who's looking southeast? Oh, we're getting some right answers. I'm not going to ruin it for you for a moment. There's three people, four people, five, six. That's good. You're all working really well. Um, Isabel, Amelia, Esther, um, you've got the right answer. Um, Bows and Toma, Lachlan and Kaylee, Chase, Magnus, lots, lots. Christopher, aged 11. Uh, Narelle, everyone's getting it now. Fantastic. Scorpius is the one I can see. Some people can see other constellations too. Now, constellations are groups of stars that kind of look like things. So Scorpio, or Scorpius, as it's called in Latin, that is the scorpion. So it's a type of spider, arachnid, with a, a sting in its tail. So this is a fantastic constellation we can see over to the southeast. Now, we must find something really cool. Now we're going to find some planets. So if you go down below the horizon, so imagining you're looking underneath the Earth, to the right and below the southeast point, you will see three planets. So you have to look quite far below the ground, and they're not visible in the sky yet. They'll actually be rising in about two or three hours. I want you to see towards the south, which planets you can see below the horizon and type that into Slido. I'm going to have a look at the planets now. They're really fantastic. And we'll be able to see them later on in the evening, probably just before bedtime. Um, and certainly this, this tomorrow morning as well, we'll be able to see them. So there are three planets, two very big planets and one not so big planet. Let's have a look at Slido, who's found those planets towards the south. Um, we are getting some answers in now. Anyone see the planets? They're quite far down and they pop up. Brilliant. Sarah and Beth, you got the right answer. Um, Ella, Owen, um, nine primary kids in a driveway in Tasmania. Hello. <laughs> Erin and Sophia, you've all got the right answer. Christopher, Hamish and Jensen. Brilliant. Jupiter, Saturn and Mars. Isn't it great? I love this app because you can see where all the planets are and you can find them and then you can wait until they come up above the horizon and then you'll be able to see them. Now, incidentally, the Earth, remember, is rotating. It goes once on its axis every 24 hours or just less than 24 hours, actually. And that is one day on Earth. 
So when we're looking at the stars, they're all up in the sky and we rotate on the earth and we move towards um, that way. So we'll move towards uh, the moon and then the, the, the planets that we want to see later on and we move away from the other direction. So that's why we see different stars and planets at different times of the day. Now let's have a look. We found the planets over to the south. Let's have a look for the sun. So for some of you, if you're in Perth or maybe in the NT, you might still be able to see the sun in the sky. It might be light. So that's easy. You'll be able to see it over um, towards one direction. But if you're on the east coast or the south coast of Australia, you will probably be in darkness. So I want you to figure out where the sun is using the app. Which compass direction would you find the sun? And here's a bit of a hint. It will be below the horizon if you're on the east coast. So thinking about the sun rises in one direction and it sets in the other direction. Can you remember where the sun sets relative to your house? Have a look around. And we're getting some good answers in here. Magnus, Amelia, Owen, Alvin, Isabel, Corinne and Sid, Lottie, Aryan. Excellent west. West and somebody saying very precisely west northwest. Fantastic. So you found the sun for over for me, it's over there below the horizon. And another exciting thing is that can the moon because find it in the opposite direction to the sun. So if the sun is over there below the horizon, the moon must be exactly the other direction. So it must be over there. So I'm going to look at my app. And I'm going to have a look, see if you can find the moon too. Where is the moon? Is it in the other direction? Let's find the moon. There it is. Okay, fantastic. So the moon is in exactly the opposite direction to the sun. And that is why it's a full moon, because the sun is shining on the face of the moon. This is absolutely great. There's one more amazing, cool thing I want you to find with this app tonight. And then you can use this app forever to find really really cool stuff in the sky and that is the international space station now the international space station is a real life spaceship that lives 400 kilometers above our heads and it orbits around the earth all the time it's got four people in it at the moment um four astronauts two more will be going quite soon and it circles around the Earth quite quickly. So this app will actually give you an alert. It will actually tell you when the International Space Station is flying over and you'll be able to see it from your location. That's one of the coolest things about this app. And in fact, it was about 40 minutes ago when it came overhead for me. I couldn't see it because so it was cloudy. But at the moment, it's actually below our feet. If you look down, um, almost towards the compass points at the bottom, you can spaceship with blue solar panels it looked like two wings so you can actually see from my direction it's almost directly down you can see the spaceship and it is really really exciting to see it go past and when it's above the horizon it looks like a really bright airplane and you can watch it whooshing across the sky really really fast and that's a great fun thing to do so we've got loads of things to do with this app it's fantastic um, it's got planets it's got the moon and the and the space station too. So I hope you really enjoy using Skyview because I do all the time. I always get very excited um, when the space station is coming over. Now, as I said, uh, tomorrow night is the full moon, so it's almost full at the moment. And that's a really great time to look at the moon because it's all there. You can see it all because the sun's shining on the front of it. So I wanted us to have a little think about the moon and learn some cool things about it as well. So the moon does a complete circle around the or so, and that is one month. And you can see different shapes of the moon throughout that time. So a full moon is when you can see the whole disc or circle of the moon. Half moon is when it's a semicircle like that, uh, or sometimes it's a crescent if the sun's shining on the side but we always see the same face of the moon. So it's always got the same side pointing towards us, which is really quite unusual. The moon has been there forever. It hasn't always existed. In fact, it was probably created about four and a half billion years ago. That's a really long time ago. Four, 
four, four and a half billion years ago when the earth was still forming. Now at this time, there was lots of stuff in the solar system. There was the sun forming in the middle. There were all the planets. There were other big rocky bodies flying around that don't exist today. And around four and a half billion years ago, we think a huge planetoid called actually smashed into the earth when it was still molten and had lots of rocky bits fly off in this collision. And all that stuff that flew off the earth from this collision sort of settled into a, a ring system, like Saturn has rings. So the earth probably used to have a ring system. Then all of this stuff started sticking together. And by gravity, it put together into a variable shape, like an animal shape. And that eventually became the moon. Now we think this is true because we've gone to the moon and we looked at the moon rocks and seen what they're made of. They seem, they seem to have been made of exactly the same stuff as the earth, except not the stuff that we have in the middle of the earth. So it seems like something's been knocked off the side and created the moon. So that's probably where it all comes from. Now, let's take a closer look. Now I've got something cool down here. I want to get it for you. It's it's the moon. So let's take a closer look at the moon. Now, this is a model. It's a little bit smaller than the real moon, I've got to say, but it's pretty accurate and you can see what the moon looks like. So on the inner side, the side that faces the earth, it's not regular. You've got these kind of white bits and then you've got these darker bits and these are called maria or seas. Now they're not really seas. There's actually no running water on the moon. It's a very, very dry place. There's only ice, water ice found in very deep craters. But on the front of the moon, you can see all these shapes and these maria are just regions where uh, a very long time ago, hundreds of millions of years ago at least, um, the molten rock um, from sort of volcanic rock from inside the moon started oozing out in volcanoes and it solidified to create these shapes. And people a long time ago thought there were seas um, but as we know, we've been to the moon. We know there aren't any seas on the moon. It's amazing, actually, the moon, because although we only ever see one side, we've actually sent spaceships there and flown around the back. So, do you want to see the back of the moon? You never get to see the back of the moon normally. Okay, does it look the same? I'm going to twist it around. No, it doesn't. It looks very different. In fact, it's almost completely without these Maria. So these volcanic regions, we don't see them on the other side of the moon. It's just mountains and valleys and craters. So the whole of the moon is completely covered in these craters. And these came from when meteorites smashed into the moon over millions of years. And they've created these wonderful craters. And the Earth would have been smashed into it. We've got running water, air, and atmosphere, and wind. It was these craters. But on the moon, they stayed forever because of an atmosphere and no running water. So it's a pretty interesting place to see. Now, if you have a pair of binoculars like this, I've got a little pair here for sort of bird watching, you can look at the moon tonight. It's a really good thing to do because they can magnify um, the craters by 10 times at least. And it's pretty good even with a small pair of binoculars. So I urge you to have a look at the moon and see what craters you can find. There's another really cool way to look at the moon if you're indoors or if it's cloudy or if it's daytime, you can't Google Maps, believe it or not. Now, I bet you've used Google, Google Maps before. Maybe you want to find a place or you want to look at your house on it. Um, that's a fun thing to do. But um, if you look at, I'll get the exact web address. Um, if you Google, um, Google Moon, or if you go to uh, google.com slash maps slash space slash slash moon, that's quite a long URL, you can find um, Google Moon. So if you just type into a search engine Google Moon, you'll find it. Um, it's a really cool way to find the stuff. So you can have a little explore. I'll find you a zoom in. And if you go to Google Moon, you can find like this. Now you can just see my light there. Now, what it shows you is the Maria. So you can actually see some of the dark patches um, you get with people on it. Here's where Apollo 11 landed. 
start to see tranquility. And then you can move around and you can have a look at some of the craters towards the south side and explore and zoom in on these amazing features and the mountains that come with the craters too. Now some really cool moon facts for you. Um, the moon has no atmosphere, as we said before. It has about one sixth of the gravity of the Earth. So if you went to the moon and when the astronauts went there, they had very heavy spacesuits because they didn't want to float away. If you went there, you could actually bounce three meters into the air. So you could jump very, very high and you would be a tiny fraction of what you would be on the Earth. And the gravity of the moon the gravity of the earth and it actually creates the tides so when you see the sea going out and the beach becomes bigger that's the low tide and that's because the gravitational pull of the moon is actually pulling that that um, ocean towards it and you get a lump on each side of the earth and then when the tide comes in again that's due to the moon too so it has a really important gravitational pull on the earth and it really affects oceans. Another cool thing about this is because the Earth and the Moon that pulling due to gravity, the Moon is actually getting further away from the Earth by four centimeters every year. So although the Moon looks really big now, it'll slowly get further and further away. And in thousands and thousands of years, it'll get further away, um, and it will look a lot smaller but it won't happen for a long time. So luckily the moon's gonna be around for quite a long time. So moon, stars, we've learned a lot tonight already. Now these apps are really, really exciting and I hope you use them in the real world tonight. Um, if it's cloudy, wait till tomorrow night. Um, but we do have, you can see some shooting stars as well. So that's pretty exciting at the moment. But the best thing to do tonight, I think, is go out, look at the moon, look at the shapes and see if you can draw those shapes. If you have binoculars, have a bit of an explore, see which maria, which volcanic rock seas you can see on the front of the moon and see if you can draw the craters too. It's really good fun. So it's time for questions. Q&A, I think you've got some fantastic questions about stars, planets, how to stargaze, the moon, its history, um, its effect on the Earth. So let's have a look at Slido and you can put your questions in. I will try and find some from earlier in too. Um, and I also just want to say hello um, to guests joining us from The Hague in the Netherlands. Goedemorgen. Um, good morning. That is nice to see you. And I'm sorry it's not dark there, but hopefully you'll be able to see um, some wonderful um, stars tonight. Now, I'm going through Slido now. To get... Okay, somebody's asking me, can you see the moon in both the North and the Southern Hemisphere? Well, yeah, you can, but only half the Earth at a time. So the moon is actually upside down in the Northern Hemisphere. So if you go to Europe or Asia, you'll see it the other way up. So when I grew up, I grew up in England, and that's in the Northern Hemisphere, seeing the moon this way up. And then when I came to Australia, I had to get used to it this way up. And it's quite funny, but on the other side of the equator. So yeah, you can see it all over the world, um, not all at once, um, but half the world at the same time. Okay, we are getting some questions in. Um, how big is the moon? Jacob and Liam, hi guys. Now, the moon is about the size of yeah, in diameter, so a bit bigger than 3,000 kilometers. So imagine that all the way from Perth to Sydney uh, and just add a little bit on, and that's how wide the moon is. So it's a very long time. So if you're flying in an airplane, it would take you about four hours or more to go around, but I don't think we can fly an aeroplane there yet. Okay, how many people have been to the moon? Great question. Well, there were several Apollo missions that went to the moon, um, and 12 people in total have been to the moon. The first journey was Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, and um, in subsequent journeys, um, there were lots of other um, but then some geologists, some scientists went to the moon too. 
um, and they started developing new ways to get around. At first, they were just walking and bouncing around like bunny rats. And they, um, they created a, a lunar rover, so a, a car that drove on the moon. So the last two or three missions had uh, around the moon, and those those cars are still there. So that will be exciting when we next go to the moon, and people are planning to go in about two years' time, three years' time, um, and we're going to send the first woman to the moon as well and uh, it's going to be very exciting in our lifetime to see people go back there okay um did venus or mercury ever have a moon good question we don't really know amelia um but we don't think so because they don't currently have moon has one moon that we know of and um, other planets like Jupiter have 79 moons. So some have a lot. Pluto is a planet that has five moons as well. So there's a big variation in the number of moons. Okay. How many stars in the universe? There's probably about 86 billion stars and that's a very big number, but it's trillions of trillions of trillions. Um, so it's a big number, lots and lots of stars in the universe. Damien asks, why is the sun hot? Um, that's from Sebastian. The sun is hot because it's very, very big. And if you've ever been in a busy shopping centre, it's very, very crowded. Maybe you're going to see Santa Claus or something. And there's a big crowd. Maybe it's a warm day. You get very, very hot and stuffy. And it's like in the middle of the sun. There's lots of gas in there and it's all squished together and it gets very hot and stuffy. And then crushed together and they collide and they create a nuclear reaction so two little tiny bits of material it's called hydrogen smash together and they make helium and that releases energy and again and again and again and all the hydrogen gas in the middle of the sun is doing this nuclear reaction again and again and again and creating energy and more energy and more energy. And that makes the sun really, really hot. And that's why it shines so hot that it can actually burn our skin, even though it's 150 million kilometers away. So that's a very, very long distance. Okay, great questions. Um, are the stars the same as the sun? Harry asks. Yeah, they are. All the stars are the same as the sun, but some are fainter and some are brighter. But they're all stars. And um, a star like the sun that was in the sky would come much the same close to us. So if it came up close, it would just look like the sun. All the same. Um, okay. Number um, and I would say 50 millimetres is ideal, so just a little bit bigger than these. Um, and if you have 10 times magnification with a 50 millimetre lens, they're called 10 by 50, um, and you put it on a tripod, you can actually see the moon's Jupiter. Now, if you want to see the stripes on Jupiter, you probably want a small telescope. But you could probably see it with just a little bit bigger, maybe uh, 100 mils, but they're really big binoculars then. You might as well buy a little. Um, fairly inexpensive telescope if you want to look at the stripes. Um, great question you can do. Um, okay. Sophia's asking, are astrophysicists and astronomers the same or do they study different things? Well, they're pretty much the same thing. Astrophysics means that you use physics, which is a type of science that measures things like gravity, uh, to understand the universe. Astronomers do that too nowadays. So it's really astronomers like more of a historical name and astrophysicist is a bit more of a modern name, but we use them both and I use them both to describe what I do too. Has a woman ever been to the moon, says Poppy, age nine? Not yet, because when they put people uh, on the moon in the 1960s and the 1970s, they chose them from military tests. And women weren't allowed to be military pilots, even though the women were really good um, at calculating all the things, going to the moon and being pilots, they weren't allowed to go to the moon. And that was very sad. So now NASA are designing a new spacecraft to go to the moon. Um, and they are going to send a woman to the moon in 2024. So that's in four years time. So that 
great day for us all. Okay, Sarah and Beth, why are there no seas on the back of the moon? Great question. We don't actually know why. Some people say it's because the gravitational pull of the Earth pulls a onto one side of the moon, but that doesn't actually make sense because um, the tides actually create a pull in both directions. They actually squeeze uh, the shape of the moon and they would sort of pull out pus like a spot on both sides. So that doesn't really make sense. So actually astronomers don't know. We don't know why um, there are no seas on the other side of the moon. Um, and that will remain a mystery until we figure it out. Good questions. Okay. Um, Elise asks how you get to the International Space Station. Well, at the moment, um, it's the go there and SpaceX have some rockets. Um, the Russian Federation have some rockets um, and some other countries too. So we send people up uh, in small little capsules on the top of a rocket and the rocket goes up and then the rocket booster engine falls back down to Earth and the capsule keeps going and flies up to the International Space Station and it docks on the side and basically sits on the space station and then they knock on the door and then they let them in and they will go and live in the space station. Living there, they can't go back, back home. Yeah. Great questions. Okay. Um, will we be able to live on Mars? Peter, age nine. Do you know what? Mars isn't a very nice place because you have much atmosphere. Um, so there's not really much to breathe. Uh, it's very cold as well. And it doesn't have a, a protective shield like the Earth does. The Earth has a magnetic field that protects us from um, particles from space. So we're safe here. But if you lived on the moon, you wouldn't have that. So it's a tricky place to live. So we'd have to build biospheres, special greenhouses that mean we could live there. But also the soil's not probably good for growing things as well. So we've got a lot of stuff to figure out before we live on Mars. Cool questions. Keep them coming. Um, doo -doo -doo. Ooh. Robbie and Andy, I like this. This is cool. If I fired a rocket through Jupiter, would it come straight back through the other side? Cool question. Well, you know, Jupiter's it is, it's made of gas. It would probably go straight through the other side. Fantastic. Um, okay. Oh, there's lots of great questions. So, so, so many really, really good questions. Sarah, age 10, asks, what would happen if we had two sons? Now, I've just written a book about this, about having lots of sons. And a lot of stars do live in couples or families, in fact. So a lot of stars aren't alone like the sun. The sun does the to a company. But a lot of stars are double stars. That they live in pair. Or they have four or five or six or even seven members. So a lot of stars have an orbit where they go around another star. So if you lived on a planet that went around one of those stars, they would have two suns or three suns, even seven suns. So can you imagine? It would be like Star Wars. You'd have lots and lots of suns in the sky, and there'd be one sunset, but there's a few suns in the sky. So it would never get dark. It would be strange, wouldn't it? I think that really I'm not sure to live on. Okay. Why do none of the planets float away in space? Great question. Well, they are floating through space, but they don't float away from the sun because the sun is very, very big and powerful. And got lots of gravity. So the planets go around and around the sun uh, because the gravity attracts them together. And it keeps us all in a big family, which is wonderful. Joshua asks, does Pluto have any snowstorms or blizzards? Well, we know that Pluto has a small, thin atmosphere, and it probably has some gases or liquids coming out of the surface as well, um, bursting through the ice. So maybe not quite blizzards, but maybe snowy particles, icy particles. Um, flickering through the atmosphere. So I guess you could say that was a bit like a snowstorm. That's really cool to imagine, isn't it? It's Pluto, but you'd have to wrap up really warm. Okay, one or two more questions. I'm loving these. Um, okay, 
how are quasars different from other stars from Owen, age nine, in Brisbane? Okay, quasars are actually galaxies. So they're not stars at all. We used to think they were stars when they were discovered, but they're actually galaxies. So galaxies are made of millions or even billions of stars, thousands of millions of stars. So the great thing about galaxies is we can see them a really long way away. These are special galaxies that have a huge black hole in their center. Now, black holes are really, really massive objects. They're huge, they're dense, they're weird, and they bend gravity. Uh, they're in space around them with their huge gravity. So no light can escape from a black hole. So you have this huge galaxy with lots of stars, and you have this huge black hole in the middle, and lots of the stars start falling into the black hole. And as they do, they get stretched and pulled by the strong gravity, just as if you fell into a black hole. Gravity would stretch you into long, thin spaghetti. It's called spaghettification. Now, these stars get spaghettified and they get stretched out into long, thin bits, and all their gas falls out and it starts to get really, really hot and spin around the black hole. And that gets really bright and hot. So although you can't see the black hole, you can see the stuff falling into it that gets really, really hot. And that's pretty cool. I actually really enjoy that. I like quasars. They're good fun. Okay, a couple more questions, maybe two or three. Okay, Saxon from Cairns. Hi, Saxon. Lucky you with that lovely warm weather. Now, what would happen if you pumped air into space? Well, you know what? If you did, it would just get diluted like cordial. So if you ever got a big glass of water and you drop a tiny bit of cordial in it, it just dilutes and dissolves throughout the water. So if we got airless space and we put a little tiny bit of air in there, it would just start to float apart and dilute through like cordial. So not too much air in space. There is a little bit, but it's all spread out and not enough to breathe. Okay, great questions. Two more, we're going to say. <laughs> Someone likes the spaghettification. I like the feedback. Thank you. Okay, Charlie is asking, how many types of galaxy have been identified? Charlie from Melbourne, aged 11. We've got loads of different types of galaxies. So quasars is one. Spiral galaxies, like the Milky Way. So the Milky Way is the one we live in, and that's a big spiral galaxy. When they collide and smash into each other, they form elliptical galaxies. So that is kind of a big sort of roundish blob of a galaxy because all the stars have kind of messed up the nice, beautiful spiral shape as the galaxies collided. Another type of galaxy is a blazar, which is a bit like a quasar, um, but we look at it in a different direction. And there are lots of other types. Um, they've got funny names like old red dead galaxies and blue, um, there's lots of them actually, <laughs> very silly names. Um, so I reckon, Astronomers like making new names up for galaxies, but really they're all the same thing. They're just a big family of stars. And whether or not they have a big black hole in the middle that's eating stars or whether it's a quiet black hole, they're all pretty similar. Even our galaxy has a big black hole in the middle. Okay. Um, Emilia, great question. Can black holes swallow other black holes? Yes, they can. So when two galaxies collide, we get two black holes colliding as well eventually. And those black holes, actually the bigger one eats the smaller one. So then instead of two big black holes, we get one humongous black hole, twice as big. It's really cool. Okay, last question. What will happen if a black hole comes near us? Well, if it comes too close to us, if it's as close as the sun, and if it's the same size as the sun, nothing would happen because it would just act exactly like the sun except it would be dark and we would continue to orbit around the black hole just in the way that we orbit around the sun. But if a bigger black hole came near us, if we went too close to a supermassive black hole, we would get sucked towards it because of gravity and we would get stretched and stretched and then we'd fall in. And after that, I don't want to know what happens. It doesn't sound too much fun, but we're not near a black hole. That's the good thing. There are black holes near us. Um, so hopefully we'll never find out. Whew. This has been so much fun. I've got hundreds of questions here. 
um, really fantastic. Um, if you do want to stay online, I might do a couple more. Um, if you've got to go, I totally understand. I've really enjoyed this session, especially because, and I'm going back to my app, this Skyview app, really good fun. It's free. You can look at the stars. You can find the horizon. You can find the directions. And look, there's some planets. I can see them on my screen now. So these planets are going to come up in a couple of hours. You'll be able to see them in the sky. And forevermore, you'll be able to look at the sky and understand what you're looking at. So that's really good. I hope you've learned a lot about that. The second thing was the moon. So we've got a full moon tonight. You can enjoy all these wonderful, cool things on the surface of the moon. You can have a look if you've got some binoculars or even if you have a telescope. I've never had a telescope, but some of you might have one at home. Um, great thing to look at is the moon. And apart from that, I'd love you to come to my next Astrophysics Live session. And that is in a few weeks' time. So if you do want to join me again, uh, you can watch this one back anytime. You can contact me through social media. Um, but if you want to join the next one, please do sign up. All the information is down below, um, just below me here in YouTube. And if you sign up for the next one, we're going to be exploring deep space, have loads of times for more questions on galaxies, on black holes, on maybe even white holes, wormholes, lots of holes, and space as a whole. So we're looking at cosmology, the Big Bang, everything, mind blown. Okay, guys, I have to go, I'm afraid. I'm going to have my dinner now, very sensible. But if you want to look outside your window now, maybe the sun's setting, maybe it's already dark, and you can explore with this app all the wonderful stars and planets that are in the night sky. Good luck, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me on Astrophysics Live. See you guys.